hello 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 folks welcome back to the channel the 2024 season is already underway and there's a multiple of tasks to tackle for a fantastic start the grass has been greening up rapidly thanks to the warmer temperatures we've been experiencing before we dive into the present let's rewind back to february 1st on that day i laid down my pre-emergent treatment to fend off any future pesky spring and summer weeds a weapon of choice prodiamine Applied it at a rate of 0.8 ounces per thousand square foot. The soil temperatures were steadily climbing into the mid 50s throughout that week, making it the perfect time to lay down this protective barrier. Given it was my first time using prodiamine water special granules, I did not have any issues mixing it into my yard mastery backpack sprayer, and I applied it using the Floodjet nozzle. As luck would have it, we got some rain the following day, which helped water in the prodiamine. Definitely a bonus compared to having to manually irrigate the lawn. Spectacle flow that I had put down back in November did a fairly well job. I did not find any weeds whatsoever in the lawn. I mean, maybe just one area right here that I had missed when I sprayed it. But I'll take care of that with some Celsius and certainty. And then that section over there actually did not have a chance to put spec flow. I didn't have enough product actually. I'll do a little comparison and show you that I actually do have some broadleaf weeds and some poa. So this actually shows that the spectacle flow actually did work on the other parts of the lawn, just not here because I didn't spray it in this area. So let me show you guys right there. So yeah, not a big deal. And it's really not that much. I mean, it's just right here up around the curb. All right, let's get started here. Uh, I did have some, I did have my straps break uh, sometime last year. So uh, I was able to contact, uh, I bought it off from Golf Course Lawn Store and uh, Ron Henry was able to uh, get Yard Mastery to send me some new ones. So what's cool about it is that uh, these are actually padded now. So it's a lot more comfortable um, when using them. That's pretty cool. And one thing I do want to show you guys is I did upgrade these nozzles. I went online on Amazon and I bought a stainless steel version of these nozzles. Um, the ones that come with the backpack sprayer are the plastic versions. And at some point last year, I was having a little issues with the plastic one. Um, they were getting a little clogged. Could be me not just cleaning them very well. So I did upgrade them to the stainless steel version. You can see here, this is the stainless steel version of the Fledget, and then this is the stainless steel version of the Foliar. So, thought I'd just share that with you guys. Show you what it looks like inside. Some little granules, really small stuff. Go ahead and pour that into the tank here. going four gallons so doing this again two two eight all right that's good that's good for me okay now with certainty this is what I'm gonna use to handle the POA um, generally when you use it for the sedges like during the spring and summertime you're gonna want to use basically the small scoop. So it comes with a scoop here with the, it has a small end and a big end. So you wanna use the small end for when you're treating the sedges. And you generally use uh, three to five scoops of that per um, thousand square foot um, to handle the sedges. When you wanna use POA, you'll use one scoop of the big one uh, per thousand square foot. In this case, I've got four gallons. I plan to use uh, four gallons to handle um, 4,000 square feet, so I will be doing four of the big scoops here. It being heavy, especially uh, once you get past the two gallon mark. I'm 
general practice with this is just one, two seconds. One, two. Cleaning up the outside here. Okay, it's almost two weeks since I sprayed the, uh, this, these areas with the herbicide. Let's take a look and see how they're coming along. Looks like they're all yellowing up. There's the poa there. That's uh, slowly dying. That one's dying. And it looks like I didn't get this one or this might be a new growth one. So I'm going to have to deal with that later. The majority of the weeds all look like... Um, they're dying, so the temperatures haven't been really that hot the um, past two weeks, so it makes it a bit difficult for the uh, weeds to die as quick as they should. Um, usually give it two weeks um, for them to die off, but in our case, uh, we did have some temperatures in the 40s a few days ago, and we actually hit 90s one day of the week. Texas weather is just so weird. We get like super hot, I wouldn't say super hot, but like hot weather enough to start producing activity in the lawn for the grass to grow. Then you get hit with uh, 40 degree temperatures the next following day. So it makes things a bit confusing. But today I'm going to mow it at my regular height of cut of three quarters. I do plan to scalp it um, if time permits. I'll scalp it down. I'm not too sure yet. My plan was to do a progression scalp so I don't roll, um, wear out the blades. And I was thinking of doing uh, my regular three quarters inch and then get it down to a half an inch and then get it down to a quarter inch. And then from there, I'll just start cutting at five eighths after the grass starts growing back up. Yeah, we'll see. I do, there are some acorns that are over on that side of the lawn that I do need to clean up. So I've got my leveling right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, push that, all that stuff over to the side so it doesn't get in the way with my mower.
Oh man, edging is tough to do, especially when you haven't mowed since November. Uh, felt like I was pretty much edging a lot of dirt and a lot of thick grass roots. As you saw in the video, I constantly had to clean up this all this debris. They kept on getting stuck. I got a battery uh, power edger, so the battery will just die when it gets stuck. So basically. This is what I was edging the majority of the time versus the grass. But yeah, I think one of the painful things is uh, cleanup uh, when you're trying to get ready for the season. And if you see in my neighborhood, I've got a lot of uh, there's a lot of trees here in the neighborhood. So that's one of the cons uh, to lawn care in the neighborhoods that are like heavily wooded. Uh, you got to deal with leaves pretty much every year. Right, that come from trees so yeah a little pain in the butt but you know it's a one time of the year type of thing last year was even worse i didn't even have a real blower with a grass catcher i was using the turl time master but um without a grass catcher i was able to blow it in certain spots and then just rake it uh that was pretty rough as well but you know seeing how things are going here it's not much uh, better but yeah, finally, I can go ahead and get started now. Getting ready to real mo. Just want to show this real quick. I basically just did a, a pass, half of, uh, a path of the lawn, uh, lawn right here. And this is how much grass I've already picked up, how much clippings I've picked up already. Quite a bit. So yeah, I definitely should have mowed a lot sooner. Okay, so back at uh, three quarters of an inch. I haven't used the uh, I haven't used roadie uh, scissors yet on the edging. Um, I still am determined to bring this down and shorter. Just don't know if I'm gonna do it right now. Probably need to take a break. Um, the most painful thing <laughs> was the cleanup. That was really painful. As I was mowing, I kept coming across tree branches, small little twigs. Uh, and uh, you know acorns, so I had to periodically stop from time to time, clean that up, and then uh, I had to rake a few areas too in order to uh, get you know, the area all cleaned up. So, bit of a nu nuisance um, cleaning up and doing your first seasonal mow, and you know that's the only thing I don't look forward to is the cleanup. That's that's even harder than just trying to mow the, the lawn, right? It's like there's no fun in cleaning up, but it's all fun mowing the lawn. But 
there's there's more leaves out there that I need to break and stuff but I'm hoping that if I bring it back uh, bring the height cut down to maybe 0.4 think about doing 0.4 inches rather than 0.5 and then 0.25 so 0.4 see how it looks and then if it's scalped good enough we'll just leave it from there and then we'll start cutting at 0.625 once the grass starts growing in some more all right back at it day two i've got the height of cut on the mower lower down to 0.4 let's see how it goes maybe we can get the scalp done today I just want to show how much grass is being pulled up here. It's quite a bit. Oh yeah, looking good. Let's keep on going.
You know, it's rather impressive to see the grass cut so low. Last season, when we leveled with sand, we didn't receive much rain, resulting in the lawn appearing quite flat. However, during the winter months, heavy rainfall in December and January likely caused some of the shifting of the sand and settling of the dirt, making the ground less even than before. And if anyone is familiar with top dressing projects, knows that the first attempt isn't usually the final one. Achieving a perfectly flat and smooth golf course-like appearance often takes more than one season, so anticipate the need for further adjustments next season and possibly beyond. Next on my agenda was taking a first soil sample for 2024 and sending it off to my soil. I concentrated primarily on the troublesome areas from last season and will be eagerly waiting on the lab results. Judging by the current condition of my soil, I'd say it's definitely in better shape than before. But I am curious to find out what nutrient deficiencies I have in those particular areas. To wrap up my scalp project, I proceeded to lay down my first application of Carbon Pro G. As I mentioned in previous videos, I encountered difficulties spreading Carbon Pro G with Earthway 2050P spreader. This was mainly due to the product retaining moisture resulting in clumping that hindered even distribution. To address this issue, I decided to try a soil sifter and it indeed helped to separate some of the clumps present in the bag. For Carbon Pro G, the two settings on the Earthway 2050P are 15 or 23. The higher setting is suitable for spreading 10 pounds per thousand square foot while the lower setting is preferred for 5 pounds per thousand square foot. Initially when I began walking this time, none of the product was actually being dispensed. So I had to adjust the spreader to 23 to get it started. Once the material began spreading, I adjusted it back to 15 and the remaining product dispensed as expected. So I feel like going forward, that's what I'll be doing each month as I lay my Carbon Pro G. Well, that's a wrap folks. I hope you enjoyed the first video of 2024 season. Stay tuned as I'll be applying my first set of fertilizer products and biostimulants in April. I plan to do it the weekend before April as I anticipate warmer temperatures by then. I'll also be sharing my chosen line of products and schedule of applications for each of them of this year. Looking forward for another transformation and sharing my journey to a golf course lawn. Feel free to check out some of my older videos from last season if you haven't already. Please like and subscribe if you found my content valuable. Feel free to drop comments if you have any questions or suggestions for this channel. And until next time, peace out.